What's are more popular, video games or movies? If we follow the money, the video game industry saw sales of $191 billion in 2021, while the film industry grossed just over $76 billion. In 2020, there were an estimated 2.7 billion gamers worldwide. Paid TV and online streaming services, on the other hand, claimed a more modest 860 million subscribers. Now, comparing numbers like this is slightly disingenuous, but it is widely accepted that the gaming industry is comfortably larger than its silver screen counterpart. And yet, despite this, I don't think it's controversial to say that films are more mainstream than video games. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who hasn't seen a movie at some point in their life, but finding someone that's never touched a video game before? That would be far easier. And while gaming might win out commercially compared to films, what about how the mediums are viewed from a societal perspective? Can anyone really claim that video games are taken more seriously than movies? Award ceremonies celebrating films garner much more attention than anything put on for games. Just take a look at some of the most popular news sites in the world and you'll struggle to find a section for video games, but a section dedicated to films? No problem. Now, this may just be a reflection of the demographics for each medium. Gamers are on average younger and consume more information on social media than traditional news sites. Why give all that money back to the government when you can hold on to that money, invest in real estate or some other asset that can double, triple your money? After all, everyone alive right now will have grown up with movies as they've been around for over a century in some form or another. But video games? Video games didn't really get going until the 1970s and even then only became readily available years later. The longevity of movies also contribute to their ability to influence the zeitgeist. Film characters, actors and directors have long affected our culture, influencing fashion, attitudes and styles all over the world. Games cannot claim to have had such a powerful impact, and this consequently contributes to some people dismissing video games as second-tier entertainment, or at least not taking them very seriously. So we can either wait another 30 years until everyone alive has grown up with games, or I can convince the world right here and right now why video games are superior to movies and every other form of entertainment. And I'm going to do the second one. First, to give the illusion of objectivity, let's compare the components of a film versus a game. What is a film composed of? When we sit down to watch a movie, what do we judge it on? The story, probably. Maybe the characters, the dialogue, the music, the pacing, the acting, the special effects. And if you take yourself a little too seriously, you might even start to consider the use of lighting, colour, cinematography and other more subtle elements. Films are endlessly enjoyable, in large part due to the unlimited direction one can take over every aspect of it when crafting the final product. The director starts with a blank canvas and, like an artist, must decide exactly how to frame each and every shot. The script writer starts with an empty page and, like an author, must select every word he or she chooses to weave into the script. The composer picks every note to be played in each track, while the actor must do their best to bring to life a character that does not yet exist in our reality. In this way, films encompass many other forms of entertainment like art, music and theatre, giving the audience plenty to keep them engaged and possessing a multitude of ways to differentiate themselves from those who came before. So now, when I say that video games can do all of this and more, it shouldn't be so controversial to put games alongside films as an entertainment medium. A game is composed of many of the same aspects I just mentioned for films. Games often have a narrative, some characters, dialogue, a soundtrack, pacing, voice acting, and special effects. All of the audiovisual aspects of a film are, at some level, found in games, since they are, after all, both audiovisual mediums. But where films are restricted to being a spectator sport, games reach out and drag you into the fray. While a clever film can offer viewers different interpretations of the same story, games have the ability to actually tell different stories, present choices to players, and exhibit completely different narratives based on their actions. This could range from simply choosing character relationships like opting to romance Triss in The Witcher 3 for some ungodly reason, or it could lead to games like Until Dawn, with over 250 endings, which one you get determined by the decisions you make throughout the story. But the superiority of games as a storytelling medium isn't just limited to their offer of branching narratives. It also manifests itself in the form of increased engagement and interactivity that allows designers to build a sense of atmosphere, tension and emotional connection that cannot be replicated in movies. I won't make the absurd claim that films cannot build tension. Anyone that's watched Alien or Silence of the Lambs has experienced tension from films. Equally, films can be very atmospheric. 
The Matrix, Interstellar and Blade Runner all craft very unique atmospheres, evoking certain feelings in the viewer. However, they are also the perfect illustrations of the limitations films face when it comes to storytelling and developing a sense of world and atmosphere. What is more tense than watching Ellen Ripley being stalked by a xenomorph? Playing as her daughter Amanda Ripley and being hunted by a xenomorph in the game Alien Isolation. Silence of the Lambs digs deep into its characters and provides interesting questions about human psychology, but the depth that it can go is handicapped by the fact that you are sat there observing characters on a screen. Contrast that with a game like The Last of Us, which begins with you playing as someone very close to the game's main protagonist before then moving on to controlling him. The ability to view a story's characters from the perspectives of others allows a level of insight and connection that cannot be delivered through film. But games aren't just limited to switching between characters throughout an ongoing narrative. Near Automata, an action RPG, tells the same story through the eyes of three separate characters, enabling it to craft a multi-layered narrative that is only fully understood after experiencing it from a variety of perspectives. Seeing the same story through different eyes allows players to gain a deep understanding of the characters they're playing as, viewing them both from the inside while they play as them and the outside when playing as their companion or another character. And just like games having more flexibility with how they tell their stories, they also have more levers to pull when cultivating their atmosphere. The game Bloodborne takes place in an 18th century gothic horror setting, and while a movie version of the game could no doubt replicate its theme, it would be unable to capture the same sense of atmosphere and tension it imbues the player with as a game. On your first playthrough, you will be filled with anxiety and apprehension as you wander the streets of Yharnam, hearing and seeing all sorts of unsettling things. And because you are the one in control, you're engulfed in a feeling of vulnerability, something that simply watching a movie version of the game would not induce. Every dark alley or dingy cave you see, every murmur or moan you hear, presents the player with a choice. Do you approach and see what lies in wait, or keep moving and indulge in the sanctuary of the unknown? If you've ever walked home at night alone through a dodgy neighbourhood, you'll be familiar with the feeling Bloodborne gives its players a constant sense of unease and heightened tension. Though, unlike your strolls through the seedier parts of town, Bloodborne equips you with a serrated cleaver and a blunderbuss to soothe the nerves. Games also excel in evoking a sense of discovery and exploration in the consumer. Subnautica, an underwater survival game, expertly captures the essence of feeling lost and alone in an unfamiliar but beautiful environment. These kinds of feelings, these sensations, are much harder if not impossible to evoke via film. The original Avatar movie does a good job making the viewer feel a sense of wonder and awe at its world, but it doesn't elicit the same sense of adventure that a video game would if it plopped you into Pandora and allowed you to explore it yourself. But I think the game that best captures the difference between the two mediums is Journey. At 90 minutes, the game lasts about as long as a film, or at least as long as films used to last before they became three hours, and for the entire runtime, it does not utter a single word. Now, silent films also exist and serve a purpose, or at least I assume they do, and so again a film with the same story and setting as Journey could be made and I'm sure it would be pretty decent. But the thing that makes experiencing Journey so special is that because you control the character, it becomes your journey. You are not watching someone go on a journey, but instead experience it yourself. You are the one making the choices and defining where you go next. Even though the game is linear, the control you have over the character is real, and it creates a stronger emotional connection to the experience than simply passively observing it as a film would. The carefree feeling of whizzing down the sand dunes as you swerve left and right, the resistance of the wind and snow as you push the joystick up and climb the tundras, and the sinking feeling as you descend into a dark abyss all synthesize the sensation of the physical and emotional journey you go on. And after you complete your journey, you are left with a sense of pride and accomplishment that can only be delivered via an interactive medium like games. Such sensations cannot be conjured via the passive consumption of a film. Now, despite spending the last nine and a half minutes shitting on films and extolling the glorious virtues of video games as a superior medium, I do not think that games should be the only form of entertainment one experiences. One of the reasons movies are still more mainstream than games, despite their comparative limitations, is because they are generally far more approachable. It requires little to no effort to stick Netflix on and chill, 
whereas games usually demand at least some level of interactivity. Additionally, games tend to be far longer than movies, and therefore require more of an investment both in time and money. Every form of entertainment has its place, and I can see that the title of this video is unnecessarily combative, but this is the internet so I'm not really sure what you were expecting. Regardless, the notion that games are limited to mindless fun or silly entertainment for kids is far from accurate. And if you have previously dismissed games as such, then I'm sure that after this video you have either been convinced otherwise or realised that none of the games I have mentioned thus far look like that Fortnite game that your kids are playing. In which case, yeah, fair enough, I'm not going to argue that Fortnite is better than The Godfather, so I won't try.